بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين لقيام يوم الدين إن شاء الله today we are going to have our lesson 27 and next week will be our last lesson in verses of law because we were not able to take one session so that's why we have uh, uh, today and next week, inshallah, will be done. Then we'll see what uh, will be our next course to present. So this is lesson 27, uh, 28. Uh, and these are verses of Hajj. Verses of Hajj. So we start with this ayat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ وَأَذِّنْ means adhan. Say adhan. We did this ayat, I think so. But uh, now we are going to do the sequence of ayat which are related to this ayat. So adhan is adhan. That means announce. That means tell the people. That means uh, hajj, to come for hajj. Okay. So Allah, did, Allah said, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ Do adhan. Tell the people to come for Hajj. Uh, رجال. رجال is not men. Rijal is plural of Rajul. And Rijal is also from coming by, by feet, walking, like we do the walk of Arba'een. So they will come. They will come walking. You just announce. Because, you know, uh, maybe uh, Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, was like kind of hesitant. Who will come to this desert? Uh, in the Kaaba, who will come for Hajj? So he might have these concerns. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he's saying, don't worry about it, Ibrahim. If those people who love me, they will come even by on their feet. And even they would come, even if they're lean camels, weak camels, they will come on it. If they don't have proper camels, if they don't have air, airline ticket, they will come on uh, by bus. If they don't have bus means, they will come by ship. If they don't have, they will come on animals. If they will not have, they will come walking. Those people who love, they will come even walking, even if they don't have uh, lean camels. And they will come from very distant, distant land, okay? Yatina. Min kulli fajjin amiq. These camels, you will see, they were they were coming. The caravans, they they will be coming from di di distant lands, remote remote lands. Fajjin amiq. Amiq means deep. Fajj means like uh, 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 like those gaps or uh, those those pathways where people caravans they appear. You, you see nothing, and then suddenly you see an airplane in in your sight or a caravan coming. So <clears throat> you will see. So number one indication of uh, this uh, indirect obligation. Then announce, proclaim. So if Allah says, call them for Hajj, that means for people like us, it becomes wajib to respond and say Labbaik. Labbaik means, yes, I'm here fulfilling your command at your service. So this is how uh, the, the ayat is uh, indicating. That means if the adhan is obligated, that means for the Prophet or Prophet Ibrahim and in the Quran as to Prophet Muhammad That means that responding to this adhan is also wajib. May, maybe adhan may be mustahab, but then the obligation is wajib. And then maybe the, uh, the method of inviting somebody for Hajj. So, <clears throat> so that's how our ulama they understand. Because Adhan has become obligated, and then there's a command verb, waf'al, sirat if'al, in ilm al usul, it's a, it, it indicates that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, go for it, obligated. So if Allah commands the Prophet to command the people to perform Hajj, 
That means people have to obey the command. Therefore, Hajj is wajib on the people. And the word means adhan means adhan means calling loudly as adhan of salat. The reason Allah mentioned people coming from uh, on their foot or on weak camels might be that if people have love of Allah subhanahu wa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they would come even if they did not have any proper means of transportation or any means at all. As we can see nowadays, uh, we have elite people, they go and come in the first class, economy passengers, we have people they come by, uh, by if you are living in, in um, uh, places like um, Egypt or those places where land borders with Saudi Arabia, uh, people come by, by, uh, by, by car, by buses, so how can the uh, uh, obligation of Hajj be understood? Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, we said if responding to the call was not obligatory, then the call would have been useless. Useless. So if say, uh, do Adhan, uh, people, they come, they don't come, it doesn't matter. And why, I'm, why am I doing Adhan, ya Allah? <laughs> Well, why I'm putting so much uh, trouble in Adhan and calling people? So there must be a reason. No, yes, there is a reason. Therefore, people must make their efforts to perform Hajj, even if they had to travel on foot or in a weak animal, if they are able to. Because there's another ayat we are going to say had given us the condition of the capacity on a weak camel. So if he has a strength to come by foot, is capable, all the capacities are there, then he has to come by foot. Even on, so people cannot say, no, I, I, I can go by foot, but I don't have a camel. I don't have a, this. Okay, can you go by foot? Then you have to. Like people, they live in closest places. For example, in Medina, Imam Hassan alayhi salat, just most of his hajj did by walking. Okay, many of our Imams alayhi salam, they did their hajj walking. It's 400 kilometers. That means it's about four to five days on camel. But they did it. They did it. Like Hajjat al Wuda ended when? On 13th, 13th Dil Hajj. Eid al Ghadir, 18th Dil Hajj. So in Ghadir is close to Medina. So it took them five days to come from Mecca to Medina. Ghadir, Ghadir, Eid al Ghadir, Ghadir Khum. So it's a five days camel, uh, camel ride. And it's a four hours to six hours uh, bus drive in normal cases. So, so therefore, um, people, they, they would like to come on foot. They can come on foot. There's no problem in that. Uh, but on the contrary, if they can come and there's no hardship on them, it becomes obligatory on them to come uh, by foot. So uh, travel on foot or on a weak camel or as long as, it is within their capacity and ability, as the next verse is going to tell us. It is not just that those who have love for God will come on lean camel or on foot only, but it is also that long distances and remote lands will not prevent them from Hajj. So there are two meanings. I mean, Allah, when he mentioned that they will come even from distant lands, that means even if it is costly, and they're able to pay, they, they, they would have to come, and they will come. So, so they would have to come indicates the religious obligation. They would come indicates the, the connection of God, that they would not hesitate to come to it for the love of Allah. So you can see that there's one fiqhi aspect and one spiritual aspect. Fiqhi aspect is, they would have to come even if they are from distant lands, in distant lands, and whatever means, if they are able to. This is the key aspect from these words. Spiritual aspect, they would come. If they love God, they would come, even on lean camels, by foot. Though, though they will come, they, even if they are in a distant land, they would come. So you can understand from this ayat uh, that there are two uh, ways of understanding. One is fiqhi aspect, one is spiritual aspect. So now, why should they come? Remember, uh, we did not complete this ayat last time. We mentioned this ayat, but we did not complete. So this is 27. Ayat 28 tells us why. 
Why the heaven they should come from all these distant lands? You see, what is what is for them? What should they do? Then this next ayah tells us, Liyashhadu manafi'alahum. So they witness that they experience, that they gain. Manafa is plural of manfa, benefits. So Allah did not say a benefit. Allah says, so they witness benefits. They, uh, they gain benefits. Manafa. Okay. Lahum. For who? For others? Yes, for others maybe. But no, for you as well. But I've spent my money in the camel and this and that and ticket. And so where is my manafa? Well, spiritual manafa. You get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get in the proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, you, you become beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You gain the pleasure of Allah. What benefit in the whole universe could be more beautiful than gaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So manafa could be social benefits, meeting people there from different parts of the world, gaining connection, ties, strengthening the Muslim community. That's one of the benefits of Hajj. Spiritual benefits, as I said, pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness of sins. Whoever doubts that uh, on the day of Arafah, did Allah forgive my sin or not? You have committed a sin. Don't doubt. Allah is invited. You are the guest of Allah. How shameful is upon you that you say that, has Allah forgiven me or not? Yeah, no, he has forgiven you. Finish. You're the guest of Allah. And he's the most generous of the generous ones. So, uh, so that's a great benefit. What greater benefit could, could be than the forgiveness of the, all the sins? And then you have economical benefits. What economical benefits? I, I spend money. Yes, the, the, you spend money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. It is mentioned in the narrations. Whoever spend money in hajj, Allah gives him back. Allah is your, your host. He will give you all the money back and more. And many people, those people who are jobless, those people who are jobless, they make this intention. Ya Allah, bless me with the hajj. And they go for hajj. Once they come back for hajj, they get a job. I know many cases. All the cases I have seen, jobless people, they go for hajj, they, they get job. Isn't that a, a, an economical benefit? Yeah, you spent money. You said, Ya Allah, I have this much money, and but I will go for Hajj, inshallah. I'm, I'm capable. I'll go for Hajj. And he comes back. The people, they took loan. Now, there's a, there's a discussion on the loan issue. It's, it's discussed in the fiqh, not here. But anyhow, if you are capable to pay off your loan, you have the capacity, and the loan was not haram. It was a qard hasana a good loan without any um, uh, interest, unlawful interest in it. Yeah, you can take, and uh, it will be considered your hajjat al-Islam. So, but you don't have to. But if you take, and if you are able to pay it off, then uh, the majority of the maraja, they say, yes, that hajj will be considered your hajj of Islam. Some maraja, they have some certain conditions, and they discuss that, uh, yes, hajj will be okay, but it, will it be your hajj Islam or not? Because you were not capable. The hajj Islam is obligated, obligated on your capacity, and you were not, you did not have capacity. Others, they say, no, once I get loan and I'm able to pay, then I am capable. I have the capacity because I have the capacity to pay off the loan. So this is the point of discussion and argument. Our maraja, they argue that, are you capable or not? Do you have the capacity or not? Is it your wajib hajj or mustahab hajj? Anyhow, so you will get a economical benefits. And those people who are working in Makkah, businessmen, taxi drivers, shop, mashallah, for them it is Eid. Like Arba'een and Ashura in Karbala, it is the economical opening for the people of Iraq. A lot of hard currency comes in. That's why before Arba'een, I was telling many of our beloved ones, please try to convince the Iraqi authorities that don't deprive yourself from an economical opportunity because many of this money 
politicians, they see how much money we will get in Iraq. So, so if there is an economical benefit, don't stop them. Yes, put some health rules and regulations, but don't stop giving visas, convince them to. So Alhamdulillah, it was open and many people were able to. It was not as before, but Alhamdulillah, the Iraqis, they were able to gain benefits, economical benefits of Arba'in this year. Blessings of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam. So therefore, blessings of Makkah, blessings of Allah, blessings of Hajj, they are there. Definitely, the people of Makkah, they also witness the, the benefits. So there is a great blessings in Hajj for the people of Makkah who host the Hujjaj and for the Hujjaj who come from different parts of the world and put their money and efforts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them back in multiplication multiplication in multiplied amounts. And I have experienced that as well. So, uh, that, but don't go for Hajj to get money in dunya. Don't be your, be your A, don't let be your A. Okay, do to go to Hajj Parwa, give me money, money, paisa, kapaisa. No, you will get it, inshallah. Allah is kareem, generous, okay? But, and as an effect, yes, you will go there and do, yeah, Allah, give me job to do dua for your job. So your dua will be mustajab there and it will be guaranteed. So just make your Allah, I'm coming there to do dua there so that my, my, my dua is mustajab and I get a better job. So therefore, uh, this ayat indicates, uh, we did not complete, we, we have corona, it's, we have, it's okay, so benefits. Social benefits, political benefits, but, uh, moral benefits, equality and humbleness, uh, political benefits, expressing the Muslim unity and the political strength as a united body, and social benefits, knowing Muslim brothers from different parts of the world, and as I said, economical benefits and spiritual benefits. Uh, this ayat indicates that there are three benefits gained from uh, by performing uh, the Hajj. These benefits could be spiritual benefits, achieving the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ma'rifat of Allah, and then social benefits and political benefits and moral benefits. So uh, what else they are going to, what, what are they, so now we know they're going to have benefits. What else they are going to do there? وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ Okay, so it's ibadat, it's a dhikr of Allah. So there is an obligation of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, when? So is there any specific dhikr of Allah? No. The obligatory dhikr of Allah that keep Allah in your mind. Keep Allah in your mind. And so, so that is the obligatory. We don't have any obligatory dhikr. Yes, we have an obligation to stay there and keep Allah in our mind. And it's recommended to mention the recommended dhikr we had. And if there is an, any obliga obligatory dhikr in Hajj, then that is in Salat al Tawaf and our, uh, uh, what they say, uh, Salat al Tawaf and um, the regular Salat, because regular Salat is also dhikr of Allah. Salat al Tawaf is also dhikr of Allah. So this is the only wajib dhikr mentioned in these days. The, 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 the Salat of Tawaf, Salat of Tawaf al-Nisa, Salat of Tawaf al-Hajj, these kind of Salat are, 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 uh, are mentioned. وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ So that they mention Allah, name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what else? So, uh, when? فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ There are a few days only for the dhikr of wajib dhikr. Where, when are those days? So let's say while you do tawaf, after tawaf, there's dhikr, salat al tawaf. When you do tawaf al nisa, there is dhikr. When you do tawaf amrat al tamattu, there is dhikr. Uh, tawaf, uh, salat al tawaf, I mean, salat of the tawaf. Because tawaf, there's no dhikr wajib. Salat tawaf, just you go and you are mindful of Allah. That means you are khushu' in, in a total connection with Allah. That is the dhikr. Because dhikr, if you recall, we mentioned in one of our sessions, Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr is from mind, okay? Mentioning, mentioning, mindful. So, so that is something which is, uh, uh, which is obligatory. However, in general, mindful, you 
you can mention takbir, tasbih, duas, all these are dhikr of Allah. And without any doubt, many people, they do it, even if it is not wajib. Because they are in a spiritual state. So they do dua kumail, they do dua tawassul, they do uh, dua jawshan kabir, they do dua some sahif al-sajjadi, and especially they do dua, certain duas of hajj, which have been prescribed by our ma'sumin alayhi salatu wassalam. So, with kurusma Allah fi ayyamin ma'lumat. So they mention the name of Allah in the uh, in the days. And there are days they have to stay there in, in Arafat from Dhuhr till Maghrib. And in Muzdalifah, the night of Eid. And Mina, the two nights. So in these nights of stay, it is, it is nice uh, because there is no dhikr wajib other than salah, and Allah is commanding, so this command is to ta be taken as a mustahab command. And it is mustahab that pe people, they spend their time in doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min bay'a ala ma razaqa ma'lumatin. Ala ma razaqahum. Okay, so we are going to do dhikr Allah. So this dhikr of Allah, the, the nature of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is in a form of thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them from the cattle, from the food product, because we eat meat, we eat ca goat, cow, camel, okay? So Allah has given us this. So whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, um, uh, we, 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 are, we are doing dhikr in, to express our thankfulness. Another indication can, that can be understood from this ayah is that alama razaqahum. That means they do dhikr of Allah while slaughtering the, the goat or the camel or the, because that dhikr is wajib. Bismillahi wallahu akbar. Okay? So that is also a wajib dhikr. While slaughtering, you say bismillahi wallahu akbar. <clears throat> Though it is small, but shaitan could make a person forget even the smallest dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so razaqahum min bahimatil haram. Fakulu minha. That's why. Why they say you have to eat from your dhabiha, from your slaughter when you go for hajj. They say you have to eat from it. Why? Yeah, because Allah says, fakulu. It's a command. Eat from it. Because you are my guest. You have given me this goat of sacrifice. I am inviting you. Come. Because God does not eat. <laughs> so he is going to give it back to us. So he said, but I'm going to give you one part of it. Because that's why some maraja, they say, divide it into three portions. Some maraja, like Ayatollah Sistani says, divide it into two portions. Why this two or three? Because this, their ayat, they indicate two portions, their ayat indicate three portions. So they say at least wajib is two portions. Say the huy ihtiyate wajib says three portions. So the two portion is you eat. Fakulu minha. Okay, so I have to eat. Because I'm guest of Allah, Allah wants me to eat from the sacrifice which I gave to Allah. He says, now you are my guest. Come on, eat from it. The distressed one, the needy one. Okay, so these are two portions. Ayatollah so, says, you eat, you feed a mu'min brother and feed the poor. So here, it's you eat and feed the uh, poor. So when Allah says you eat, that means you all eat with, from each other as well. It's an indirect thing understood from the narrations and another ayat. But this ayat says you eat. But if we add this ayat to this ayat, yes, fakulu, then you all eat. That means it's a plural pronoun. It's a congregational sense. That means put together and together eat. That means you eat and you feed others as well. Fakulu. Minha, eat from it, not all of it, part of it. Okay, because what I want, other part, give it to the ba'is al faqir. So from this ayat, we understand there are benefits for us, and our responsibility is to do wajib dhikr and mustahab dhikr, and then uh, these dhikr is done in a specific days uh, and in specific actions. And then, uh, like slaughtering the goat, and to do the dhikr in expression of being thankfulness, and to eat from this 
uh, sacrifice and to feed the desperate and the poor, desperate poor. Okay. Now, this is in Surah Al-Baqarah. We, we are done with that Surah Al-Hajj. Now, this is Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number two. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ If you have finished your rituals of Hajj, your, uh, your worship of Hajj, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Okay, now we, we are done with the Hajj. فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ Again, Allah, you said to do dhikr during the Hajj. In ayyam in ma'dudat. Now we are done. Yes, Allah says, don't forget me. Keep, keep me. It's not just mention me in the Hajj and then uh, forget me and khalas, uh, dhikr is gone. No. Because salat is always there. Aqim is salat ali dhikri. That established salat in my mentioning. Okay? So, so therefore, Allah, like many people, they go, they go for Hajj particularly. My Ramzan, Allah is there. After my Ramzan, Allah is not there. And my Muharram, Allah is there. After my Ashura, Allah is not there. Haram things start happening. So there are people there. Friday, Allah is there. Like for Christian, Sunday, God is there. Jewish, Saturday, God is there. Not all, but many of them. Like many Muslims, only Friday. So Allah says, no, 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 no. Mention me always. Keep me in your mind. The way you keep in your mind your parents, uh, all those things, whom you remember them, whom you mention them, whom you are mindful of them, your wife, you see, whomsoever you keep them in your mind, keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. Like those or more. Okay? If you can't do more, at least mention Allah the way you mention your wife or your beloved one or your fiance or who, your husband or whatsoever. Keep Allah in your mind more than, if not more, at least equal to. Okay. Ready to go. Yes. So, Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Mention Allah. Okay. Kadhikrikum abaakum. The way you mention, keep your fathers in your mind, your parents in your mind, okay? Because people, they love their mom and dad. So as you keep your mom and dad in your mind, keep uh, Allah in your mind. Oh, ashaddu dhikra. No, 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 no. If you can more, more than uh, your, your beloved ones, then Allah's keep Allah, mind, be mindful of Allah more than your beloved one. More. If you cannot keep as, if you can keep them more, then do it. But if not, then at least like the way you keep others mindful. There are people, they say, Rabbana atina fit dunya. Ya Allah, give us dunya, give us dunya, give us dunya. Akhirat, nothing. وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ They don't have any, anything in the Akhirat. Why? Because they never ask Allah for Akhirat. They never earned Akhirat. They never kept efforts for Akhirat. All their things was dunya, dunya, dunya. So Allah says we're not going to give them anything in the Akhirat. Okay? Khalaq means resting place. Then we will not have anything uh, for them in the Akhirat. However, there are other group, those who love Akhirat. They want dunya and Akhirat. Okay? Because Imam Ali says, work for your dunya as you are going to live forever. Work for your Akhirat as you are going to die tomorrow. So balance. Work for dunya and Akhirat. And among them there are, they say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Oh, our Lord, give us in this dunya good. Good could be from the good deeds till the blessings of Allah, the risk, livelihood, everything. So this is this can be the good. So give us good in this world. And give us good in the hereafter. Keep us away from the hellfire. Protect us. Save us. Avoid us. Keep us away. Qina is qi from who? Taqwa. Avoid, keep away, ittaqi, qina. That means 
uh, pull us, keep us away, protect us, prevent us from the uh, hellfire, uh, punishment of the hellfire, chastisement of the hellfire, protect us, prevent us, Ya Allah. Uh, prevention is better than the cure. Avoid, avoid yourself, uh, keep yourself away and your family members from the hellfire. The hellfire with the fuel is men and the stones. So now these people are asking Allah. According to the narration, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Dunya hasana in dunya is wilayat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. That oh Allah bless us the wilayat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because wilayat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is the continuation of the wilayat of Allah and wilayat of Rasulullah. So if you have wilayat of Allah and you don't have wilayat of Rasulullah, wilayat of Imam Ali, it does not help them. If you have wilayat of Allah and wilayat of Rasulullah and not wilayat of Imam Ali, not helpful. So if you have wilayat of Imam Ali السلام, it is automatically you have wilayat of Rasulullah. Automatically you have wilayat of <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are asking, uh, in dunya hasana is the wilayat to be in the, to be blessed in the, under the authority of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi And that is the greatest blessing, greatest hasanat, greatest good things. Hasana. And according to the Riwayat, Akhirat Hasana is Huriyat. Hur for male, Hur for female. So female Hur are for male and male Hur are for female. So anyhow, this is Hasanat in the Akhirat. Waqina Adab and To keep us away. Okay, these people who recite this dua, that's why many mu'mineen they recite this Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. You must be su surprised why there are so many uh, nice uh, meanings, duas uh, in the Quran and our ancestors, they have taught us this Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar because this hasana is relied of Amir Mu'mineen. And because there is this protection of the punishment of hellfire, <laughs> there's great two things in this dua. So do not underestimate this dua. Me, I, I by myself when I was before, I, when I used to read Quran, and yes, I see duas, mashallah, uh, more stronger in the meanings. Uh, I would say, why our parents and the madrasa books and all they're focusing on that? Then when I found out uh, when I was studying, uh, oh, Hassan is wilayat of Imam Ali bin Abi Talib Ali Salam. No wonder, no wonder, is anything which has to do wilayat of Imam Ali bin Abi Talib, we are going to super glue ourselves with it. Women Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. Okay, if those people the, who recite this dua and those people who perform the hajj and those people who do the, uh, do the dhikr of Allah even after the hajj more than their parents, what is for them? <laughs> for them, لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا Okay, وَاللَّهُ سَيْرُوا They will have a portion of whatever they earn. Portion? Why portion? Okay. Why portion of whatever I have earned? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you more than what you have earned. So whatever you will get on the day of judgment is not because of your HCPC hajj which you did in this dunya. No, it is going to be out of his mercy. So Allah is going to give you so many things out of his mercy. And reward of the hajj will be a small HCPC portion of the uh, oh, this reward of the Hajj can be maybe one hour in the paradise or maybe three days in the paradise. The eternal paradise, it's not a reward of Hajj. Eternal paradise is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why when people, they say, why I, I did all this Hajj and Allah will give me only portion of reward? They will get the portion of uh, this uh, their portion of this, whatever they earn. Whatever they earn, they will get. So whatever they earned, they will get the reward of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more. Wallahu sari'ul hisab. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those people who will perform Hajj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their accounting easier and faster Sari al hisab is his fast reckoning swift reckoning because I, the hisab is going to be a very lengthy day on the day of judgment every single second of our life is going to be kept on the table of accountability so those people who have performed hajj and those people who are doing dhikr of allah even after hajj and those people who are doing reciting this dua then allah will finish it soon go go into the paradise Khalas. and then again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the dhikr in this ayat Wadhkurullah, similarly to the previous ayat, and mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi ayyamin ma'dudat, certain days, okay? Certain days, this, this dhikr wajib, which is related to hajj, is certain days. That means Allah is saying that hajj, hajj is only certain days. Hajj is only one and a half day. Or let's say, yeah, uh, counting days. But if we want to go to maximum, it's only uh, three days to four days. Like we start from Arafat. So from Dhuhr of 9th Dil Hajj till Dhuhr of 12th Dil Hajj, how many days? Let's count. 9 till 10, one day. 10 till 11, two day. 11 till 12, three day. 12 Dhuhr, you leave. So exactly three days from Dhuhr of Arafat to Dhuhr of 12th Dil Hajj. So minimum, minimum days are ma'dudat. Okay? What about the Umrah al tamattu Yeah, you come in the morning. Many people, they come, they perform quick Hajj. They come in the morning, Jeddah, and they go to Makkah. Makkah is almost empty, 9th of Dil Hajj. They easily do their Umrah al tamattu they, 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 they come out of the ihram, but still wearing the attire of ihram. They don't take off their ihram, but they, they, they unlock their, themselves from the ihram. They're done, do taqseer, and they make the intention of hajj, and they're in the Kaaba. And they go to Arafah. So, so Umrah al tamattu can be done in three, four hours. The morning of night you come, that's Umrah al So let's say the total, total, total hajj with Umrah al tamattu can be three and a half days not more that is if you are going to stay in mina the whole day arafat the, uh, i mean mina the whole 11 12 day but you don't have to you have to just spend nights there and the whole day you can be back in mecca but for, but for the travelers let's say those people who are in rush they don't have extra few days what are the wajib days i have to be 9th al hajj 10th al hajj to uh, 11th al hajj 12th al hajj after 12 the Hajj, you can take your departure from Jeddah and you're done. So you arrive on 9th, you depart on 12th at night. Arrive early in the morning if, uh, uh, on, on 9th. And that's it. Not too many. Ayyam and ma'dudat. All the squeezed, if you squeeze the day, fi ayyam and ma'dudat. Okay, so these are the days of uh, 11th the Hajj, 12th the Hajj, and 13th Dil Hajj. The, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Okay? So 11th Dil Hajj, 12th Dil Hajj, 13th. But those people who are in rush, they don't want to stay 13th. They can leave on 12th. So 11th and 12th. فَمَنْ Who is haste, who wants to go leave early, fi yawmain, two days, which we calculated in our minimum Hajj, which makes it a total of uh, three and a half days with Umrah al tamattu No problem. Leave after 12. Uh, after 12, Dhuhr, leave. But if you are there in Mina until Maghrib, 12th day, then you have to spend 13th, and then early in the morning you can leave. That day, you 13th, you don't have to wait, wait until Dhuhr. And if you are delayed, it's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to penalize you and give you penalty. Why did you stay one day extra? Well, I want to stay four days, five days. It's okay. It's not part of your hajj. As long as you don't consider it part of your hajj, you just want to be in that camping area, enjoy the spirituality. So, فَلَا إِثْبَ عَلَيْهِ 
If you go, want to go beyond three days, this ayyam in ma'dudat, there's no, there's no problem in it. There's no harm in it. Okay? فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى For those people who safeguard themselves, who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have this taqwa, who love the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seek it. لِمَنِ اتَّقَى that means you did not do haram thing on those extra days. That means you did not stay extra days saying that Allah wants me. Then it will be bid'ah. So if you're going to stay extra days, there's no problem in it. There's no harm in it. You can stay extra days. And uh, And be mindful of Allah. Avoid displeasing Allah. Seek pleasure of Allah. And let this be your knowledge that you are going to be resurrected to him. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this connection of the words to uh, hashr. Uh, uh, Why Allah says here hashr? He should have said that uh, Allah is going to account you. Allah is going to put, uh, bring you on the day. Uh, why you are going to be resurrected? Hashr. Hashr means in, in multiplication, resurrection, and, 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 uh, and going to the land of, uh, of accountability. Because hajj is hashr. Hajj is hashr. So many people have so many people. They're going where? From Arafat to Muzdalifah. Muzdalifah is all hashr. This is a mini hashr. Hashr in dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word hashr for the akhirat. Remember, this is your hashr, okay? This is an example of how you're going to come out of the grave wearing kafan, ihram, okay? Kafan, and then you're all going to proceed to the land of mahshar, the land of accountability, the way you're proceeding to Mina from Arafat coming out of the grave. And then after Mina, it is like reborn back again forgiveness that is the jannah so what is the uh, what is the uh, what is, what is this command we said literally it in, literally indicates obligation literally the dhikr is an obligation but due to the evidences karina there's no dhikr mentioned obligation uh, except for the salat salat at tawaf and the dhikr while doing sacrifice other than that all the dhikr is mustahab so there is a qarina, there's a clue that this dhikr is not uh, wajib. Now this is a quick summary of what we said. Ayyam and ma'lu, ma'lumat and ayyam and ma'dudat. So in one ayat, Allah says ma'lumat, known days. So those are the days which are uh, uh, 11, 12, and 13. The days of, uh, or 10th, 11, uh, or 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are prescribed. Ma'loom means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defined. Ninth Dil Hajj, 10th Dil Hajj, 11th Dil Hajj, 12th Dil Hajj, and for some 13. So Allah has de defined them. So they're ma'loomat. It's not that uh, people are confused. Oh, when, 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 when we go to Arafat, when? No, 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 it's ma'loomat. I've designated those days. Good. Then what is ayyam and ma'dudat? And these ma'loomat days are ma'dudat. In a few numbers, you can count them. They're not entire year. They're not the whole month. They're not random. No, there are a few days, as we said. The whole Hajj can be done in three and a half, three and a half days. Okay. So these are ma'lumat in Surah Al-Hajj, ma'dudat in Surah Al-Baqarah. What are these known days we mentioned that uh, uh, where someone should... Uh, these are the days of Tashriq, according to the Rivayat. That means the days we stay in Mina, 11th, 12th, 13th. Or is it as uh, it is said Tashriq, from, Tashriq is from the sunrise days, or the moon is eliminated, Shuruq uh, al-Shams, rise, or the moon is risen, full moon days. You know, these days the moon is almost full. So it's Mushriq, it's eliminated. Or tashriq is from the cutting of the meat. These days, the, the meat is distributed, the sacrifice of distributing. So, <clears throat> or it is derived from the elimination of the heart after you have done Arafat, after you have uh, done Muzdalifah, your sins are forgiven, you are in a hyper state of spirituality. So these are the, the days of elimination. 
So these are either the first uh, three days after Arafat and Muzdalifah, like 11th, 12th, 13th, or uh, it is uh, the first 10 days, or as I mentioned, the days of Hajj, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the days of Hajj. And the days of Hajj are normally, they start from Arafat and then ends to the 12th al Hajj. So there are different interpretations in these. Uh, Sheikh Baqil Airawani has presented uh, the interpretation uh, of uh, 11, 12, 13, but he said that the, uh, these are not, uh, uh, these, the, the issue is not important at this point to define uh, whether these are the 10 days or three days or, uh, or the, the, uh, the, the, the four days of Hajj or 11, 12, 13, Ayyam al Tashriq. And then what is recommended dhikr? So Allah has given us the recommended dhikr is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. Okay. So uh, either this is the, the wajib dhikr or it is the, uh, or the one mentioned in the narrations which is considered one of the obvious dhikrs to be recited in the days of Tashrir. So in these days of Tashrir, our Imams والسلام, they narrated that the recommended dhikr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, mention Allah, is this tasbih, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, وَلِلَّهِ الْحَامِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ عَلَى مَا هَدَانَا وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ عَلَى مَا أَوْلَانَا وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَنَا مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ So it is mentioned in our hadith that after the Salat al-Eid, you continue for 15 Salat. So Salat al-Eid, after Salat al-Eid, 14 Salat. So that means the first day, because you started after Salat al-Eid. So the first day you recited five times after each Salat, because you have five daily Salat Fajr, you did not recite because Salat al-Eid comes after Salat al-Fajr. Next day, you recited after Salat al-Fajr, after Dhuhr, after Asr, after Maghrib, after Isha, five times. So three fives is 15. So three days after Salat, immediately uh, you recite this dhikr. Uh, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. So God is the greatest, God is the greatest, there is no God other than Allah. And God is the greatest, God is the greatest, and all praises to Him. Uh, uh, God is the greatest for what He has uh, guided us for, uh, towards. And all the praise for Him, for what He has given us from the bounties and blessings. And all the praise to Him for what He has given us from the blessings of the cattle. Of the, on the day of Hajj, which we eat. These three days, people are slaughtering and distributing, slaughtering and distributing and eating. So these three days, behemoth al-an'am, the cattle are being consumed. So that is that is why uh, the a'immas, Ali Muslim, they presented. So the dhikr is, when Allah says, do dhikr, which is dhikr mustahab, as we mentioned, because of the qareena. But what is this dhikr? Either rabbana hatina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar Either that uh, takbirat of Salatul Eid. Okay, so economical benefits, we mentioned strengthening the economical ties between the Muslims around the world and seasonal economical benefits for, uh, uh, that, that's supposed to be social benefits, <laughs> strengthening the ties between the Muslims around the world. No, economical, they will share their business cards and they will export and import with each other. So it can be both, okay, economical and social, so strengthening uh, economical ties between the Muslims around the world and the seasonal economical benefits for Meccan and Medinians by the Hajis. And there are many other benefits which can be found in various books and in great detail, but our discussion will be from the aspect of jurisprudence. Those are these courses, Ayatul Ahkam, the Fiqh aspect. So to, the, from this aspect, two rulings can be uh, derived. Fiqh ruling number one, the obligation of Offering sacrifice is is one is in one of these three days. One of three days, 11, 12, the Hajj, and that sacrifice should be associated with mentioning the name of Allah. Therefore, the sacrifice must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. 
Okay, so after that, in Surah, Al, uh, in Surah Al Hajj, again, we come back to Surah Al Hajj. Thumma liyakdu tafathahum. After they have done the sacrifice, after they have the, this, so so what is uh, what is remaining? Uh, let's go back to see this ayat is 29, and that ayat was 28. Uh, minha, eat from it. Okay. So uh, after they they do the dhikr of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then jumps into uh, getting rid of the the, the the filthy things from the body, like hair, extra hair is filthy. We cut off extra hair, extra nail. So that means do taqseer. Then let them accomplish their needful acts. ثُمَّ لِيَقْضُوا يَقْضُوا لَيْقَضَى Perform. قَاضِي So they perform. Execute. They execute, they perform. تَفَثَهُمْ So what is this تَفَثَهُمْ So they do the shaving of the shaving of the hair or uh, uh, shaving uh, and clean themselves. You know, like when you come from Mina, I mean, the day of Hajj, you're filthy, miserable. I mean, the whole body is like uh, filth. So it could be shaving. It could be cleaning yourself because two days you did not take a shower in Arafat and Muzdalifa. So after you sacrifice your goat, you are going to get rid of your hair and nails. So you are going to do either taqseer or either uh, shaving of the head. So this is tafatahum. And then clean yourself. Okay? So tafatahum, get rid of the filth from your body. After you have sacrificed, we said in the previous ayat, sacrifice the goat. After sacrificing the goat, you try to um, get rid of the hair. Or for the women, they can do taqseer. Taqseer is done by cutting a little bit of the hair or a little bit of the nail. Or shaving of the head for men who are doing first hajj with differences according to the maraja. So, uh, so there used to be many people, they used to make nazar, manta, that, oh Allah, if you will uh, help me with this, on the hajj, I will sacrifice a goat for the, and uh, feed the poor there, in hajj, feed the hajjis, feed the poor people there, which is great thawab. Okay, like feeding the Zadaran Imam Hussein, feeding the Hajis is great tawab. So you made another, and your another came to him. So when should I fulfill my another? After you have sacrificed your own goat, then you fulfill your nudura. Then you sacrifice the goats you had made a, a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an oath or in covenant that you are going to sacrifice something there. So well, after that, after you fulfill your another, well, yet. Then they perform their tawaf around the ancient house. Atiq is ancient. Atiq is um, sacred from any violation, any sanctity. But the Imam Hussein Ali Salatu was not uh, uh, not secured from this Bayt al Atiq, which Allah says it's secured. So, so getting rid of the extra growing parts of the body, such as nail and hair, by clipping the hair or cutting, uh, cutting uh, the nail uh, or hair or shaving of the head, halq for men existing exiting the state of ihram. So now you are out of the ihram. Therefore, after sacrifice, one can exist exit the state of ihram either by clipping the hair and the nail or or the cutting of the hair. Usually, in the past, people would make a vow to give extra sacrifice, nether, or to do any good deeds to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or to thank him, or to fulfill the vow, vow on fulfillment of the need, for example, any type of nether, nether to thank, nether to, uh, to, to, to something happen, or no, just, just out of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he just wants to give, or to help the poor, he made another that I am going to do that, okay? So uh, um, if fulfill the vow or, or, or on the fulfillment of the need, for example. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding him to fulfill it before leaving Mina and performing tawaf because the place of sacrifice is Mina uh, in case he might forget to fulfill. Tawaf around the ancient house. The Kaaba is called Atiq, ancient, because it was the first house kept on the earth. 
or the people. Or atiq means secured or freed, freed in the case of slave. So it must be because it was not drowned in the flood uh, of Nuh. Atiq, a'atiq raqabati min al-nar. Free my neck, that means free me from the hellfire. So the slave, when they used to free, free them, a'ataqtuka, I have freed you. Anta atiq, you are free now, you are not a slave anymore. Okay, in those days, old days. So, so atiq means also free, secured. That means it's secure from slavery now. So it must be, and because of when the, the, the flood of Nuh, والسلام, they said, uh, it is mentioned that the, the foundation of the Kaaba, which was built, kept by Prophet Nuh, والسلام, the flood did not overcome the, uh, the, 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 the foundation of the Kaaba. So the flood was around it. Uh, it was not, or, or it was not owned by anyone uh, on the earth. It's a free house. That means Kaaba has never ever been property of any king or any uh, any ruler. This place is waqf. It's a sacred place. It's a free place from being owned uh, uh, by any any king or any ruler. So that is Atiq. So Atiq could be ancient house because it's an ancient house. Atiq could be secured from violation of any sanctity, which is the obligatory rule, because uh, idols were kept inside and the sanctity was violated. Imam Hussein Ali Salam became fugitive, sanctity was violated. So, uh, so as, a, as an obligatory, it is Atiq because you have to keep Atiq and keep, keep it away from the, any violation of its sanctity. And then finally, uh, Atiq could be uh, secure from uh, the flood of Prophet Nuh which is a weak narration. But anyhow, the most strongest indication of this, which I could see is, and God knows best, is Atiq is from ancient, and Atiq is from, uh, 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 it's a sacred house of God. It's, it has a secrecy, it has a sanctuary, special sanctuary. Uh, one should not violate the sanctity of it. So it's Atiq. It has been considered by Allah a sacred or a sanctuary or a sanctity, sanct zone of sanctity. People, they need to observe that. Allah has made it atiq. So what is this tawaf uh, of the Holy Kaaba? This is tawaf of Hajj. After you have sla slaughtered, you do tawaf of Hajj and we call it tawaf of Ziyarat. And then tawaf of Nisa, which is called tawaf based on the narrations of Ahlul Bayt because clip clip clipping of the nail or cutting of the hair uh, caused the exit from the entire state of Ihram, okay? Except the spousal intimate uh, relations and later requires the tawaf of Nisa. So perfume, uh, when you shave off your head or uh, do taqseer, everything becomes halal, which was forbidden in this, due to the state of Ihram, except for perfume and uh, spousal relations. So perfume, per, per, perfume becomes halal after tawaf of ziyarat, tawaf of hajj. And spousal relation becomes halal after tawaf of nisa. So it is a, a later requires tawaf of nisa for the permissibility for both women and men. Therefore, it must be the tawaf which completes the exist, exiting from the state of Ahram. The scholar like uh, Father al miqdad chose both tawaf is indicated from the word tawaf. So ayah says, tawafu. It's not one of these two tawaf. It's both tawaf or hajj, tawaf, whatever tawaf wajib is there, it is uh, it is obligatory after that, uh, after the after the taqseer and uh, shaving or shaving of the head. Okay. Ba with the Kaaba. tawafu bil bayti. Remember. Do tawaf with the Kaaba. So this ba, what is this? Some said it's tawaf around. Ba means bil bayti means with the Kaaba means around the Kaaba and not the Kaaba or, or, or on its base, which is called Shadar one. Remember, there's a slide uh, base, slide base uh, 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 when the wall of Kaaba ends, there's a slide. This is called Shadar one. So they say that uh, uh, Bil Bayti, 
do the Kaaba around the bait, not around, not on this thing which is not considered bait. Uh, or, or some said no, do the Kaaba with the entire, including the Shadar one. Okay, the Kaaba and not on the Kaaba. That means don't don't step on Shadar one because Shadar one that sliding it's part of the Kaaba. It's the base of the Kaaba. That could be the base where Prophet Adam Ali Salatusam kept. So that base, don't step on it, okay? Go around it. Don't, don't do tawaf on the Kaaba. So don't do tawaf on the Kaaba, or don't do tawaf on the base of the Kaaba, which is the Kaaba called Shadarwan, but do around, like, like not on the Kaaba, top of the Kaaba, not on the Kaaba on the Shadarwan, no, around. Tawaf around the Kaaba requires to be done in a circular, not square form in a common consideration or so you cannot go like this like this like this and like this no you go like this that's all that's how they usually do tawaf because the left shoulder always stays uh, adjacent to the kaaba otherwise it will not be considered around so the, allah says do kaaba in cubicle of the kaaba no he said around so there's a round however that word is debated even if you do cubicle you have done cubicle around so the walking steps must be done voluntarily and not involuntarily or forcefully because then it will not be out of will because of a sleeping or a forced person doesn't have a will. Like wheelchair person must have will and ability to pause, go, uh, the, the one who is running. So if the wheelchair, the, the, the wheelchair person should command the person who is uh, who's pushing the wheelchair? That means the commander of the uh, the the, 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 push, the person who's running the wheelchair should be under the command of the person who's on the wheelchair. So that means it's irada. So how can there be uh, there, there there will be uh, can there will be yes, like one year I, we went for Hajj and we were like group of youth together all connected with each other. We we're around forty and everybody's afraid to lose each other and miss each other and the Hajj gets lost. So we were super glued with our teacher. So our teacher is in the middle and we are connected and everybody's like <laughs> clustered with us. So, and when we come beside that uh, area of uh, Hajar al-Aswad, it becomes so tight, so tight. So, uh, so uh, there's a dua that, oh Allah, I'm asking you the way uh, walking on the, uh, on the water and walking on the air. <laughs> so one of our youth like got squeezed up. So he's, he's, his steps are like uh, in the wind, in the hawa, because he's, he's been moved by the crowd. <laughs> so he said, Sheikh, uh, you're doing this dua, walking on the hawa, I'm walking on the hawa, I'm not walking on the ground. So the Sheikh said, go back, do your, repeat your tawaf, because you did not do tawaf on your will. Somebody was pushing you, the, the crowd was pushing you, and you were just like floating in the air. So the, his feet were not touching the ground because he was squeezed, he came squeezed up with the crowd in that area. So the sheikh told him to go back to Hajj al-Aswad and repeat that segment back again. So, so that's why, Allah min yas'aluka, something like that ala ma or al hawa the 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 clusters of the wind the way things are walking on the clusters of the wind and the clusters of the water so this guy is saying i'm walking on the clusters of the wind juda al hawa anyhow so there needs to be irada the will therefore the the will must be there the word tamattu uh, emphasizes uh, 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 no, uh, yat, uh, yat, not tamattu is emphasized. Allah did not say well, yatufu. Yatufu is tawaf. Yatawafu, that means they must do it. And they uh, and, and not one round, they must do it in several rounds. And that is indicated from the narrations that they are seven. So how many rounds? They have to do several rounds. They have to do it. But how many? The hadith, they say, these are seven rounds. 
Okay, so, because I think that the time, oh my goodness, we are over time. Okay, let this, since these two slides are left, let me just finish it. And we explain this in our Azadari section of Azadari. So we are done. So Dalika, all these rituals of Hajj, the tawaf and the slaughtering and the sacrifice and uh, all these kind of things which you mentioned, the cutting of the nail and the hair, and these are all shahair of Allah, rituals of Allah, sanctities of Allah, uh, uh, sacred things of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ حُرُمَاتِ اللَّهِ So it's being in the state of ihram is sanct sanctity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sacred state of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Kaaba, sacred state of Allah. The, all these things, many rituals are sacred state. Being in the state of ihram is a sacred state. Hajj, sacred state. So these, you have to respect the greatness of it. That means don't violate it, the, the sanctity of the state. Don't do things which invalidate your ihram, invalidate your hajj, invalidate things. Observe the sanctity. So if you are going to do that, you are going to greaten the sacred ordinance or sanctities or, uh, or, or sacred rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is good for you. Allah is not going to benefit from your things. And the Rabbi in, in sight of your Lord, Dhalika, this, this ayat also is used for Azadari of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam. Dhalika, that is, وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ Allah says, and observe greatness of the sanctity, observe respect. And those people who observe this with greatness and respect, the sha'air, we said sha'air, signs that indicate the piety of heart or it leads to the piety of heart. Sha'ira means marks, alamat. So these are all rituals which indicate that your heart is piet or they lead to the piety of the heart. And I said, both are acceptable together. So it leads to the piety of the heart and it is out of the piety of the heart. Because you are pious, you perform hajj. And because you perform hajj, you become more and more pious and become more and more close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rituals of the hajj mentioned, therefore, فَإِنَّا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Dhikr of Allah, sacrifice of Allah, feeding, exiting the ihram, fulfilling the vow for him, the tawafs are sacred acts ordained by Almighty. There, these are the signs and rituals which indicates the people towards Allah. That means they give them more and more ma'rafat. Whoever greatens it or considers it great, then it is good for him and indicates the piety of the heart. And final ayat, Ya ladina amanu, la tuhillu sha'air Allah. Okay, the Sha'ir Allah, these are sanctuaries, sanctities, sacred things. Do not violate them. Do not violate them. Okay, uh, Sha'ir Allah. Okay. okay, subhanallah. It's amazing how Quran relates things with each other. Beautiful. Okay, so what was the Hajj about? One of the social benefits, connecting, cooperating, knowing each other. And subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this ayat of sha'air. That means sha'air, this, this connection, cooperation uh, of Allah must lead to cooperation. Cooperate on the kindness and the righteousness. Okay? Don't cooperate on haram things. Go, don't cooperate on things that, that violate the sanctity. Do not cooperate with each other in committing sins and transgression and doing zulm. Do not support the zalim. Fear displeasing Allah. Uh, be mindful of Allah. Safeguard Allah. Avoid, do whatever it pleases Allah. Why? Because Allah is severe chastiser. In Allah, shadidul aqab. His chastisement and punishment is severe. Anything which is a symbol or emblem or, or rituals indicating the direction towards Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala must be respected and not violated or disrespected. And from that comes Azadari, which we, was the first lesson of our verses of Lord due to entrance of Muharram. We did it or neglected and so on, so, as such as rituals of Hajj and must be exalted.
وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين Okay, so let's see. Let's uh, first uh, 